And welcome to our community, Susie Thomas, visiting with Daryl Owens, who is the founder of Crossover Boys Academy. Uh, good morning. Good morning to you. How are you doing? Doing great and very appreciative of you to be here today. A Crossover Boys Academy is probably something not too many are familiar with because it's brand new. Mm-hmm. So uh, first of all, let's get to know about it. Daryl, um, The what's behind this? Why is it important? Um, Crossover Boys Academy is an all-boys academy that, um, I guess to simply put it, I felt like the Lord was leading me to it um, around May, June um, of this past year. And um, it's simply a school that is designed to engage um, not just the students but the families and to um, edify the community. So um, our values are uh, community, education, and purpose. So um, defining community as the strengthening and building up of others, and we do that through education. And within our education, we really want to help people to uh, walk in purpose because in walking in purpose, that's when you're truly able to do um, something great that'll that'll last because, mm-hmm. of course, it's through him. Why crossover? Where did you get the name? Um, crossover, um, I'm really, really into uh, biblical Hebrew. So um, I am pursuing my master's in Old Testament biblical studies with a concentration in biblical Hebrew. So um, in the Bible, the word um, for he- the word for Hebrew, um, it actually means to cross over. And what that means is to um, simply means to be different. So to, st- to, to cross over and to stand on the other side, um, opposite of everybody else being different. And um, when you look in the Bible, um, it is very clear that God is asking for us to be different. So um, in the way that I've, I've, I've structured the school in the way that, um, and I should say in the way that he structured the school and in the way that um, everything has been set up, it's different than the um, the normal, whether it's a public school, private school, charter school, um, mm-hmm. everything is just different. So, You are located in the Martin Center. Correct. Uh, 3rd Street Southeast in mm-hmm. Canton. Um, who is the school... Who are you targeting for being students at the school? Is it families that live in Southeast Canton in the neighborhood there, or who who is this for? Uh, the target is uh, the inner city. Um, okay. The frustrating part about education, uh, when you look across the country, um, the inner city is just not doing well. And um, since public schooling has started in the country, um, inner city schooling hasn't done well. So. Um, Growing up in the inner city, working in the inner city, and um, just seeing what I would say uh, the inner city lose, really, when it comes to education um, and setting the school up, I want to see the inner city win. So uh, I am targeting um, inner city students and families. Am I opposed to people who don't live in the inner city coming? Of course not. Um, I will welcome them. Um, definitely, but um, the target is for inner city students and families. It's those families that have inspired you to start this. Definitely, definitely. Why do you think that is? Why? What is it about our public school system that has seemed to let down so many inner city students? I think it's just the system. Um, I think it's, um, I know it's a lot of great people that work in the public school yes. system. Um, but great people can overcome a bad system. And um, I truly do believe that the system, the education system, is set up for suburban students and families. So when you take that system and you try to apply it to the inner city, it just doesn't work. And Mm -hmm. that's where that disconnect is. So, um, again, I I wanted to change the system um, and I wanted to just be different. And I think through that. We can make it happen. Systemically, then, how will crossover be different than a public school in the area? Well, um, we're not our when we talk about education for us, education um, isn't just merely um, imparting facts Mm -hmm. into the students. Um, We're trying to uh, God has already put things in us. So we're trying to be vessels and drawing those things out. Um, And we realize that. Education, um, when you talk about math, science, reading, that's that's great. But for me, um, I think that's a small part of it. Um, so, yes, we do want the kids to be um, academically smart, but um, there's definitely a bigger purpose and there should be a bigger purpose when it comes to education. Um, our relationships with the students and families, it's not a 
eight to three o'clock thing. Um, the students and their families, their lives extend past three o'clock. So our relationship with the students and families needs to also extend past three o'clock. So, um, yeah, so those are just some things that uh, we plan on doing different. Um, and I guess to, to simply put all of that is our approach to education, I would mm-hmm. say, is definitely different. You're aiming this towards young men. Why Correct. young men? Um, because when you look in the Bible, um, men, we set the tone. Um, God has given us a divine um, role, I would say, that allows for us to set the tone. So um, I want to um, help boys to um, cross over from boyhood into manhood Mm -hmm. and set the tone for uh, their families and for their community. We're speaking with Daryl Owens. He is founder of Crossover Boys Academy, which will be opening this August. Yes. August 7th Mm -hmm. in 2017. Correct. Um, You're talking about a private school that is really focusing on the entire child as a learner. Uh, if you're talking about community education and purpose, mm-hmm. and we'll get into each of those. Yeah. Um, and you're talking about offering this for free. How are yeah. you doing this? Honestly, I can't say that I have an answer, um, but I'm, I'm going by faith. Um, mm-hmm. For me, it's, it's clear. Um, it was clear when God said to start the school. So um, kind of like when he told Abraham to leave from where you are and, and, and to just go, um, he didn't really give Abraham any plans. And when you look at what Abraham was doing and where he was going, um, he was just being led by God. So he said to do it. So I'm doing it. And um, he's been revealing things to me as the process has been going. So um, one of the ways I guess I can say that we are doing it is um, just through private donations, people um, just being generous enough to uh, to give. Um, yes, we could have tuition, but um, I don't want the money to be a barrier to mm. the kids and the families um, being able to learn and take something. So um, so God, God is definitely leading it and I'm just following what he's asking of me. And um, he's he's revealing it all to me um, as I go through it all. Very exciting. Yeah. Have you started hiring teachers yet? No, <clears throat> excuse me. No, not yet. Um, Tell me about I that will, process. What are you looking for? Um, well, I would say about three weeks ago, three, four weeks ago, um, as I was just meditating on the position and, 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 and what type of a person I was looking for, um, as I'm thinking about it, um, he said, you're going to do it. So I'm like, there you go. <laughs> oh, OK. I, 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 OK, I, I can yeah. do that. So um, initially I was looking for someone else to do it. And I just wanted to uh, take on a um, an right. administrator's role. Mm-hmm. Um, but then he said, you're going to do it. So um, so I'll be the one teaching, um, teaching the class. And then as we add grades um, and we'll be adding a grade each year mm-hmm. and um, minimum will go to K through five. So um, as we add grades, um We'll see from there um, where it goes. I love the idea of the the impressive young man I'm looking at being a <laughs> kindergarten teacher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is just fun on lots of levels. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about you, Daryl. What's your interest in this? What What's your background that brought you from that point to this point? Um, well, I grew up in, uh, in Barberton and, um, I grew up in the inner city and, um, growing up, I thought that I had a a good education, um, from Barberton city schools, not to say I didn't, but I I thought I had a a good education and, um, I went to Bowling Green state university out of uh, high school. Mm -hmm. And, um, honestly, I went to uh, Bowling Green to play football. Um, the academics were, not really on my mind. It was just something that had to be done in order to uh, play football. So (laughs) um, I'm at Bowling Green and I was there for three years. I ended up transferring to Walsh University Mm -hmm. where, um, where I graduated. And honestly, it was, it was by the grace of God that I, um, I graduated and I got my degree. Um, but while I was at Walsh, um, Antoine Rene, he discipled me and, um, and, and, and taking me to, uh, his church deliverance Christian, Mm -hmm. um, I met a guy named uh, Robert Easley. We call him Sarge. And he got me into the school system um, 
to where I was just simply volunteering. And he would all he would always say, I want you to come down to the school. He would always always invite me to Hartford where uh, Sandy Womack was the principal. And then we would ask uh, me and Kenny Thomas, we would ask him, well, what are we going to do when we get there? And he would always say, I don't know. We just going to be led by the spirit and and God will show us. Um, so we would we would we would go. And um, that turned into me coming more consistently, which turned into me working in um, the after school program. Um, and that was really my uh, entrance into working with kids and working in the education system. And I've been um, I've been blessed to see a lot working in the education system, um, good and bad. So um, in seeing all of that, um, I know my calling is kids. I know that God has called me to education. So it um, it makes sense to start Mm -hmm. a school. And your major at Walsh was communications. Oh, interesting. Yeah, communications. So um, I wasn't in going to school. My my degree wasn't even in um, in teaching. It was just something that once I got into education, it just fit. Um, Mm -hmm. I ended up um, being asked to uh, help for the um, the third grade initiative uh, to come in as a tutor and teach kids and uh, to help them to uh, get on standard to read. Um, eventually, I ended up working at Heritage Christian and um, I taught Bible. And um, mm-hmm. so um, with every job that I've had for the last eight years, um, I found myself in a teaching role, teaching kids. So when this opportunity came, um, it, again, it, it made sense. And Bible classes at uh, Heritage Christian, what age group were you working with there? Um, I taught seventh. Oh, interesting. I taught seventh grade. Yeah. yeah. Um, so have you um, <laughs> have you been around kindergartners much, Daryl? <laughs> yes. Um, well, yes, yes, because um, working mm-hmm. at Kent Calvary Mission um, yes. as a program director and even working in the after school program, I had kindergartners. Mm-hmm. So um, I was. Tell me how they respond to you. It's got to be very fun. Yes, it is because mm-hmm. they're they're impressed by by my height and by my <laughs> size. Yeah. So um, for them, that's enough. Yeah. So um, you don't have any trouble with classroom control, do you? Whatsoever. No, no, no. <laughs> you just no. walk in and it's good. Yeah, it, it, it works <laughs> like that. So yeah, it's it's a good thing. So I think they're impressed with the size, but um, once. Once we start to to talk, once we start to uh, work with one another, um, I truly believe that they're able to see that I have a heart for them. Mm -hmm. So um, plus, I I just I just enjoy kids. I I enjoy kids. And I think it comes out in um, how I relate to the children and work with them. And the importance of having a strong, positive male role model in the life of a five, six year old is Mm -hmm. finish that sentence. It's critical. It's critical to their spiritual development, Mm -hmm. I would say. Um, And I think, again, the Bible is clear in a male's role in um, not just the development of young men, but also of young women and um, just in the community. So um, I really want them to to grow up and to really leave an impression, um, not just on the community, um, but on the state, on the country, on the world. And um, the goal is for Christ to be glorified in all of that. And the thought that you would be adding a class then every year or however, as the Lord leads, mm-hmm. adding a new class, uh, you will get to impact these young men from K through 12, yeah. 8 through 12, 8 or 12 or wherever, however far it goes. Correct. That is an incredible opportunity. Um, we're speaking with Daryl Owens. He is founder of what is going to be a brand new academy for young men, Crossover Boys Academy. Um, And we will be back with Daryl after these words. You're listening to Our Community.